Welcome everybody, and thank you for coming to the opening of Dragonfly Pond. Uh, my first uh, duty is to welcome Nick Baker, who has come to open the pond, and who has done so much to popularize British wildlife and to educate, and I think that above all is the important thing, to educate people about the wonders we have in this country and to inspire future generations to cherish those wonders. And my thanks to him for coming. You shall hear from him in a moment. And secondly, uh, Rory Mackenzie Dodds and Kari de Koenigswater, who they, I think, above all, have been behind the creation of Dragonfly Pond. They are Dragonfly experts, and they've guided everything we've done to create this wonderful habitat for dragonflies and to educate people about them. Curry and I are, are very, very grateful to an enormous number of people for the realization of this project, which as you probably know is part of the Wild Exbury uh, project. Um, I think first of all, it's very important for Curry and I to thank the family because they've been really superbly supportive right from the very beginning. So very, very grateful. Uh, to them, and also to the, the Exbury Gardens Trust uh, and the board too, uh, all, all of whom have really uh, lent their weight to, to this project. Um, th these people have supported us all the way through, um, from the very idea through to the uh, planning, but the people who realised it, because that's, as pro you probably all understand, it's fine to have a plan, it's an entirely different thing to get it actually together uh, in position. And that's what uh, Tom Clark, our head gardener, has done. He and his team have been absolutely fantastic. If you want to know the kind of work that they've done, just look around you. They've created this from virtually from scratch. So we're fantastically grateful to them. They've also been supported by other members of the Exbury community, um, Ian Wilson, Elaine, and the, the railway team, um, Nick Shuttler, um, uh, the office group, there's Celise and Robin. There are so many names I could mention, but the people that, are, that have been involved, you know who you are, and we are terribly grateful for what, for what you've done. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, Yes, the, the dragonflies themselves, were they able to speak, would say, thank you, you've given us a lovely home. We're really, really grateful to you. So, yeah, that's fine. Now I'm going to hand over to, to Nick. Uh, Nick has been a, fan, a tower of strength when it comes to doing, um, to popularising uh, dragonflies, um, as have the British Dragonfly Society. The British Dragonfly Society are here today. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, you ought to have done. 1,500 members. Curry and I have been members of the society since a couple of years after it was started. Um, it's, it's a very good organization, uh, well worth it. Uh, and they, they have given us our support here. What's really special is that they have designated this pond a British Dragonfly Society hotspot, one of the very few in the country. Um, Fiona, you'll be very pleased to hear that since our two weeks that we've been here, Curry and I, we've had a dozen species of dragonfly and damselfly here. Possibly a, pos possibly a 13th with a brown hawker from Nick this very minute, practically. <laughs> so, yeah. So, thank you to everybody. I'll hand over to, to Nick now. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, thanks very much for coming as well. Uh, just get a little show of hands. Who's sort of a dra considers them as a dragonfly person? Uh, who's a dragonfly kind of person? Obviously, all of those with a British Dragonfly Society T-shirt on, I wouldn't expect any less. Um, but if you're, who's, who's just kind of curious, wants to know a little bit more, has never thought about it, sees this as a wonderful opportunity to get to know these fabulous insects. That, this, if you're a dragonfly person, I took one look at this. I didn't even need to know this was a British Dragonfly Society hotspot. You get a feel when you spend a lot of your misspent childhood, or I say actually 
a very well spent childhood poking around in ponds and ditches all around the UK, you get a very good feel for what is a brilliant pond. And I took one look at this this morning and went, wow, look at that. This is a fantasy dragonfly pond. You could not make a better one. And the fact it is slap bang in the middle of the new forest, which is, I think, one of the things, most people think of ponies when they think of the new forest. For me, I think of dragonflies. It's a hot spot in itself. So this is a hot spot within a hot spot. Um, and it is beautiful. And this will be paradise for dragonflies and therefore dragonfly watchers. But the great thing about dragonflies, and you'll learn that today, is that they are indicators that the world is a good place. We need some good news at the moment. We all need good news in our lives. We need to spend a few hours um, putting life in perspective, and there's no better way of doing it than sitting by a pond in July looking for those gauzy winged wonders. Um, and they just bring a little, little, they bring a little sparkle to your every day. And for me, there's never, there's, you can't waste time watching dragonflies. And we've gotten zinging about. This is the, per you couldn't have got the weather better as well. This is the day to learn about dragonflies. You will not only just see them whizzing about, but they're doing stuff as well. You'll see them um, mating, and, and <laughs> that's quite a for dragonflies, if you uh, um, uh, well, if you want to know more, we'll ask us later. Um, there's egg laying going on. You've got aerial dog fights as males drive off other males from their territories. You've got um, a bit of courtship. Look, you've got one of Britain's arguably one of Britain's biggest dragonflies there. You've got an emperor dragonfly zinging about over the pond. So there's lots of things that are going on. Then you've got the little damselflies, which kind of are easier to miss because they're a little bit more subtle. Um, that's all going on, and that's not even. Um, the in well, for me, that's interesting, but there's even more to dragonflies than that because some of these things are spending two or three years under the water as these incredible uh, little, well, they're little monsters, really. <laughs> okay? So, without further ado, I'm going to open the culmination of all this hard work, all these brilliantly uh, forward thinking, brilliantly minded people, all the hard work of the gardeners, the team, the fish catchers, um, the train drivers. Uh, Everybody here is wonderful, and, uh, and, we're, and, and you, of course. And we're going to open this so that many more people can enjoy and learn about dragonflies. And, of course, with the dragonflies themselves. Okay, are we ready? You ready? Yeah, come on, are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah! What's your name? Albie. Albie's ready. Are you ready? Yeah. What's your name? Marley. Marley. What's your name? Rowan. Rowan. I mean, that's my middle name. Not many people know that. Anyway, right. Okay. Ready? Here we go. It's open. Well done, everybody. Well done.